um, and fun experiences that they've had um, throughout the CHCI experience. So without further ado, I think we will get started. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I also want to thank you all for joining us on a lovely Wednesday evening and what feels like a very hectic time, right? We are about to um, go into final season. I was talking to some of these students. They're all major um, study mode for finals. We also have a lot of closing 2023 if we're in the workforce. Um, if you're here because you're an adult in a student's life, drop it in the chat. What organization do you work for? What school do you work for? Um, how are you connected to a high school student? We'd love to know. And we also want to thank you for, again, giving us some time in your evening because we know it is a hectic time before holiday closing, um, holiday shutdowns, where we want to try to get everything prepared for 2024. I know we at CHCI are feeling that on our end. And if you're a student joining us, a high school student joining us who's interested in next gen, and we also thank you for your time because we know you're probably studying like crazy and having homework and again, finals. So um, we'll just get right on started and uh, try to end even before the hour. So again, thank you so much for joining us today um, at CHCI's Next Gen Latino Leadership Program Informational, which is a free leadership trip. Again, I'm going to repeat it like three or four times. It's a free leadership trip, experience, opportunity to come to Washington, D.C. Um, for specifically for Latino 10th and 11th grade students. The agenda is very short and quick. We have um, four sections here today uh, as part of our informational. We'll do a short, brief introduction again for myself and some of the folks I've already mentioned and highlighted um, that are joining us in the informational. I'll talk a little bit about CHCI as an organization, what we do, what our mission is and why we exist. Uh, and then I'll go into specifics about the Lexington Latino pro uh, Leadership Program. Um, you know, who can apply? What does the application look, look like? And what does the actual trip um, really mean? And then we'll end it again with that Q&A with the junior alums. So the experts of the trip, the experts of the experience will get to share um, their memories and their expertise, what they learned, um, and really be put on the hot seat, as I like to call it, um, to talk to you a little bit more and hopefully convince you to apply if you're a high school student that's legible, or if you're an adult in a high schooler's life to push folks to apply, to help them with their application um, and to hopefully get them to be accepted to the program. All right, so to start off with introductions, um, I'll go first and then I'll invite the student panelists to introduce themselves um, after me in order of the screen. So I'll get started with myself. My name is Maribel Sanchez, and I serve as the Associate Manager of High School Leadership Programs here at CHCI. I've been with the organization uh, since 2021 and have seen over 300 students. So I've seen three different classes of about 100 students each. Um, it's been a delight to work with high school students. It makes me feel youthful and young and vibrant because they are youthful, young and vibrant, intelligent, brilliant. Um, and I can go on and on and on about them, but I'll stop there and have uh, Roberto kick it off. They'll go in order saying their name, Hispanic heritage, where their family is from, their school, their city and state, and something fun about uh, what their experience was like. Thank you, Maribel. And honestly, thank you again for having us here um, tonight and to share our experiences about CHCI. And also thank you for sharing interest in such an amazing program as the Next Gen Latino program is. So as you can see in the screen, my name is Roberto Carmona. I am a Cuban immigrant. In fact, I immigrated from Cuba three years ago. Next week is actually going to be um, the third year anniversary. Uh, I come from Miami, Florida, the sunny city of Miami, and I go to Hialeah Miami Lake Senior High School in South Florida. And my favorite CHCI experience will be not only experience what a day in Congress looks like, but more specifically going in the underground train of Congress to move around um, the specific offices of the um, Congress members. So yeah. Thank you, Roberto. Stephanie? Well, hi, my name is Stephanie Grenier. I am Puerto Rican, actually, so I'm San Juan Puerto Rico, so I'm speaking to y'all from my beautiful island. Um, I'm uh, currently a junior at the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico's high school setting, 
And I have to say that my favorite memory of CHTI was um, the afternoon after our congressional like meetings with our senators and state reps um, that we went to the World War II Memorial, the Korean War Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, and the Lincoln Memorial. We just had such a good time like walking around and like sharing everything with it in the day. That's a fun one. Thank you, Stephanie. Henry? Uh, hello, my name is Henry Hudson. Um, I reside in Fort Washington, Maryland. Uh, um, in my school, I currently attend the University of Maryland. While I was at CTI, I was at Academy of Sciences and Computer Science. Um, and I would say overall, my favorite CTI experience uh, was the day on the hill where we just got to meet a lot of our elected leaders. Uh, we got to meet representatives. And do the assistance and just overall learn about how Congress works. Um, and the people that help make it happen, not just the representatives, but their assistants, um, and just pretty much everybody that just works to help make Congress happen. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think on my end, it was a little bit hard to hear, Henry, so maybe. If you can speak a little bit closer to the mic, but I will repeat back what he said. He said Hill Day was his favorite experience. He got to meet members of Congress and like Roberto, just see what it's like to be on the Hill, quote unquote, right on Capitol Hill, um, where decisions are being made. So that is awesome, awesome, awesome. It is also a highlight of everyone's day. That same day is what Stephanie mentioned, where uh, at the end of being on the Hill, meeting with members of Congress, we relax and go visit all these memorials um, outside. And so that really concluded that Wednesday Hill Day experience that they all really, really love. So thank you each for sharing and appreciate you each for wanting to give back um, and try to recruit some more students to attend the program as well. So getting started here, we want to take a step back and talk about CHCI as an organization. Um, so CHCI stands for the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute. Uh, and here, there's the picture, uh, I think a very first picture probably of how the idea really um, came about. It started when a few members of Congress who identified as Hispanic saw a need um, on the on the hall in the halls of Congress, right? They they noticed that there wasn't enough Latino representation. Um, in that picture, there's only five folks there. And so they realized this is not representative of the Latino community in the nation. Um, and because of that, they were inspired, they were pushed maybe to start an institute, start a nonprofit, a nonpartisan nonprofit leadership development institute that can help develop the next generation of Latinos, help bring more Latinos to Congress. If, and that doesn't necessarily mean that CHCI only creates members of con future members of Congress, future politicians. It means that we want to help empower and teach leadership, that we want to teach folks how to use their voice um, in every sphere of of uh, career paths that they can think of. So each of these students, let me just kind of popcorn to each of them. What is your career aspiration? What is your form of study? Is it politics? Roberto? So I'm interested. So my future plans deal with politics, but not specifically with domestic policy. I want to pursue foreign policy and specifically major international relations with um, concentration in European studies and in minor languages. Awesome, Henry. Um, I would love to love to serve as political leader, um, several capacities. I'd say potentially um, as a councilman in my own county, um, government, uh, the governor of my own state, or potentially even the president. Um, but I would definitely love to be a political leader someday. Awesome. Hey, so there is one. There will always be some. Yes, and we love that. Stephanie, what about you? Well, I don't want to study anything with politics. I actually um, want to study nuclear engineering, so. There you go. Perfect examples of three really different types of um, fields that, again, we want to empower them. We want to teach them what the process, the civic process looks like, the policy creation process looks like, and really just have a network of uh, Latino students, Latino future leaders, emerging leaders that they can lean on for support in the future. And so today, you know, that mission really plays out in beautiful ways. Um, them three are 
examples of that. And here on the screen are a few different programs that I'll touch on briefly to tell you a little bit more about what we do. So we offer the high school um, Latino leadership program, which is the top left picture um, in front of the MLK statue. Then to the right of that is the congressional internship program. So these are students in undergraduate um, uh, level of school, um, either in community colleges and or um, universities that come to Washington, D.C. for a semester to be um, actually working and living um, on the Hill. And so that's a pro that's the next sort of um, program up in terms of age group that we offer. On the bottom uh, left hand corner below the high school program is a picture of some of our fellows hanging out. I like to say kicking it on, on the um, South Lawn of the White House. Their program is a little bit more extensive. It's the fellowship program. There's a, a public policy fellowship program and a graduate fellowship program. These are for um, profession, early professionals, folks that graduated, recently graduated from a bachelor's or a master's program. Um, and they have a bit of a more extensive experience where they do come and stay in DC for nine months. So a calendar kind of school year. Um, and they're placed on the Hill and in outside agencies too. And so they they really do have sort of this leg up when it comes to looking for jobs and entering the career, um, the workforce, because they have this network and this experience that's very unique to uh, policy in Washington, D.C. The last picture here is the sort of other side of what CHCI does. Not only do we offer our leadership programs, but we also convene Latinos to talk about the issues that are impacting us as a nation. And so that picture on the bottom right hand corner is um, one of our fellows actually um, serving as a speaker at our leadership conference. We have leadership conference and summits um, that specifically focus again on issues that impact our community. So healthcare, tech, education. And we bring in Latino thought leaders, um, experts on the matter that can talk about what is happening within each sphere of um, these issues. Now to go specifically into detail about the Next Gen Latino Leadership Program. It's one of our newest programs. It's the CHCI actually started with the fellowship program, then they created the internship program, the and then the high school Latino leadership program. We also offer a few other programs too, so feel free to visit our website for more information about everything we do. Um, in this short period of time, we'll only cover the next gen um, leadership program, Latino leadership program in specific. So it started in 2011, and we give all our thanks to State Farm for developing the partnership with us to create this pretty much one and only national leadership and civic engagement opportunity for Latino high school students. It started off as a regional program um, and we actually only had spots available for folks in certain areas, in certain states, predominantly Latino um, populated states like California and Texas. Um, then we were and, and actually had more support, interest, and success in our program, where we were um, sought out and offered more help, more financial support by Ford Driving Dreams. And we got to expand our program even more to reach all 50 states, Puerto Rico included, shout out to Stephanie, and DC, shout out to Henry, because he's a DMV native too. And so you're wondering maybe, well, so what does it take? for you to sign up. Um, who, who do you have to be? Where do you have to come from? Again, three little easy things. One is already covered. You have to reside in the 50 United States, the District of Columbia, or Puerto Rico. I think that pretty much is anybody that um, is on this call, I hope. <laughs> and then you have to be a current 10th or 11th grade student, meaning you're a rising junior and senior the summer that you would get admitted. Um, so currently you're in 10th or 11th grade in 11th grade. And we do that on purpose because we do a lot of college readiness workshops. And so those topics are really catered towards the upper, the last two right, grades in high school. And then the last one is um, pretty simple too. You have to demonstrate interest and in wanting to learn more about civic engagement. Do you want to give back to your community? Do you want to make change? Are you already um, involved in a group at school that you're really passionate about? We want to see that on your application, and that's what would get you into the program. 
The program is offered in three different one week sessions. And so those are one in June, the 9th to the 15th, and two in July, the 7th to the 13th, and the 21st to the 27th. You're able to indicate on your application which week you would be available. If you're available on all three weeks, you would indicate that you're available on all three weeks. You're only going to be selected for one week because each of the weeks is literally a replica of the same um, program schedule. So we just give you that option because we know that you all are very intel intelligent and highly motivated students who are accepted to other programs, um, family oriented and want to visit folks, family in Latin America every summer. And that's okay. So you have options to choose and, and, and really indicate when you're available to come. There's no minimum GPA requirement. This is not a the top 10% only gets accepted or you have to be Ivy League bound. We really want the diversity of thought from everybody. We want it to be really, again, um, representative of the Latino community in general. But our preference is given to individuals with financial need. This program is fully funded. Um, by our sponsors, um, State Farm and Ford, just being a few of them. And for that reason, we want to give it this opportunity to students who wouldn't otherwise have the chance to do it. Um, so a part of the application will include uh, parents' financial information so that we can sort of gauge where you're coming from. So what to expect on the application? The application is could be a little bit lengthy, um, I want to call on Stephanie to tell me, sort of before I go over step by step, uh, what what's on it. What did you have any fears or nerves about when you uh, first opened your application? Well, the thing I was like most nervous about when I first opened the application was able. It was like me being able to like convey what I was actually like feeling and wanting to portray, since English is not my native language. My English writing skills are like up, up to par compared to my Spanish. But um, as soon as I, I started writing, like all that like worries um, left and I just flowed. Honestly, the best thing to do with this application is just be authentic, be yourself and to not overthink it because usually the first thing you're thinking, it's like the right thing to write. That's such a beautiful answer, such a beautiful answer. Roberto, Henry, um, what about y'all? What um what was going on in your heads? What were what was your thought process? Any tips and tricks for tackling the application? Um, I'd say you just want to write about what you're the most passionate about. Um, just kind of write a little bit more about your life experience and kind of how your experiences have shaped you um, in, in the Latino community. Um, just helping the Latino um, can influence your desire to pursue political field or just any kind of passion, passion that you want to pursue. Um, and I think just being authentic uh, and really just writing about these passions uh, is really important. And I really think that um, that can get you very far um, and potentially accepted into this program. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. It's a little bit still in and out, Henry, on your end. So I'm going to repeat back what I what I captured on my end. Um, to be really passionate about what you're writing about and let that show, let that shine on your application. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, that's that's as much as I got there. So if you also are having any um, mic troubles, feel free to answer on the chat uh, for any of the questions as well. Roberto? Yes, yeah, so I will like to echo Stephanie's comments and just be authentic and be yourself. At the end of the day, what this es what the purpose of these essays is for CHCI to understand who you are as an individual and what is what drives you and what motivates you. Uh, the other thing that I will say is very important in regards to consideration for the program is the resume transcript and overall your professional career as a student. And what I would like to say is some of us might not have a very strong resume or might not have had the opportunity to participate in many activities that might uh, influence the decision of CHCI. But at the end of the day, it's not quantity, it's quality. You have to know how to sell yourself and you have to know how to sell the things that you've done in order to guarantee that what CHCI is reading is actually impactful. 
So as I said, uh, when it comes down to the resume, make sure that the activities that you're including uh, reflect your passions, your motivations, your goals. And at the same time is just shows your dedication to your over, overall character. Awesome. Thank you each for sharing. Um, and perfect segue as well for me to sort of read off the different components to the application. Um, as Roberto hinted, resume and transcript is tends to be, as well as the essay questions, some of the longer portions of the application. Um, but the first thing that you'll be prompted to do is enter, enter your student information. That will be very simple. It's all the things that you already know. So your phone number, your email, um, as well as where you're coming from. Again, some of the same things we answered, your Hispanic heritage, your school. Please make sure that you are indicating your information, not your parents' information, because we'll be reaching out to the phone number and email on file to get in contact to you directly. Um, and so that sometimes is a mix up for some folks' parents or families that um, share phones. And that is perfectly okay, so long as you can indicate that that is, um, that that's your situation and that you don't have um, a personal um, means of reaching. But email should be the best way and the way that we reach out to you too. Resume and transcript. We have a link on the application portal that will give you an example and some brief instruction on a resume. So if this is your first time making a resume, which it often is, no fear, you have an example and um, to everyone's point that they said, be yourself on it. If you haven't had the opportunity to do a lot because you take care of your family, because you work um, and sometimes have to provide for your family, that is as strong as the next person who is super involved and does, you know, 3 million things at school. Um, so please don't sweat it. Please don't overthink that uh, part of your, your application. The transcript um, is more of a time, timely thing. Uh, make sure that you follow the protocol at your school to get that um, in and, and processed um, ahead of the deadline. Three short essay questions. And by short, we really mean short. There is a, don't quote me here, maybe 250 to 300 word um, limit. And so you really have to be concise in what you say and how you say it. Recommendation form, we started to stray away from a letter. So this should be even easier for the adults in your life that you tap on to ask for a recommendation. They will be emailed a form that has questions and a rating scale based on some of the things, the qualities and, and um, characteristics that we're looking for in a candidate. Um, and so that, like the transcript, is a timely thing. Please give your recommender enough time to fill that out. Um, as well as any technical difficulties that might happen with somebody's email, maybe not getting that link sent to them, um, et cetera, any other issues that might come up. And then the last piece is a signed parent, guardian, and permission form. Because you all are under 18, um, you legally cannot be um, applying and or potentially accepted without your parents' consent. And so that should be filled out by the parent and um, scanned into the application system um, as a part of your application. What to expect from the trip? So you finished your application, you got it in, you got it in early, because that's a big, big thing. Do not wait last minute. Um, I I'll be the first to admit I always wait last minute and I always regret it because things like this take time and thought. And so um, please do plan accordingly uh, with the time that you have to, to finish your application, because then chances are you'll get accepted and you'll get to experience an awesome week long experience of college career exploration workshops, um, learning about your role as a leader in the community, engaging in conversations about Latinx identity, what it means to be a Latino leader an emerging Latino leader. Um, you'll get to understand how the federal government works and how policy is created. Again, they all alluded to this earlier. You get to go on the Hill. We have that picture on the slide here. One of um, the most famous and most popular members that our students love to see, AOC. Um, they do get to see her. Typically, you get to see your member of Congress. So if you're not from New York, 
chances are you might not be able to see AOC, but you do have time to roam around the hills of Congress and the rooms and all the hallways. And so you get to see um, the offices that you want to see, at least on the outside. Um, and also you get to debate issues and really practice before you get on the hill and advocate and talk to these leaders. So everything that you really need um, will be given to you beforehand. There's nothing that you have to prepare for um, at home or practice for um, at your school. We will, uh, once admitted, get you everything that you need to know and the support and the friendships that um, make the experience more worthwhile while you're doing it. So the application is already open. It's been open since September 15th and it'll close on February 15th of this upcoming year. So y'all got time. I hope that everyone at least on this call is convinced to start the application, to open it and read it. Even if um, this is a busy time and you can't get to fill out your application, it is really nice to just kind of get it started in your head. Um, that's one of my tips and tricks for you, because then you get to talk about it with your friends and family over the holidays, right? Like I'm applying to this big program and it asks me about myself. Can you tell me about myself? What do you see as a good quality in me? What should I write about? So you can use these types of prompts when you're um, gathered with your family over the holidays this season. What are the benefits? So you get accepted, you're, you're done with the application, you get accepted. What will you get out of it? You'll have a free round trip travel to and from Washington DC, wherever you're located. That entire week's lodging, hotel stay is included, it's free. Local transportation to and from all of the activities. So from the hotel to Capitol Hill, to the restaurants, to the monuments, to um, CHCI headquarters, to the White House, as you see the picture there. All of it is included. We bus and shuttle everywhere and um, folks on the CHCI team will be staffed with the students um, at all times. Activities and meals are also included. We have some really cool um, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner options, and we'll have water and snacks the entire time. So really, your student is taken care of. You get to hear and network with prominent Latino leaders and CHCI staff. You'll have the opportunity to learn more about issues impacting the Latino community. You get to engage in conversation with them, as mentioned, to debate them learn about the debate process and how it actually works um, on a federal level. You'll have access to a junior alumni benefits upon the completion of the program, meaning you get an opportunity like Roberto, Henry, and Stephanie have now to give back and serve as a panelist, talk to other students, persuade them to um, apply. They also get access to webinars and resources, letters of recommendation, um, and really like 24 seven access to the staff that will mentor um, and support them throughout their leadership journeys. Some of my favorite um, takeaways from the program that I like to see as a program manager is the last two. It's the, the lifelong friendships, the sightseeing and exploring, the realizing I'm the first in my family to do anything like this. Nobody has ever traveled outside of my city. Um, it's the first time I've been on a plane. Those types of comments are really what make my job worthwhile. It's what makes the experience such a an awesome um, experience for the students because it does mean a lot. And um, this is something that they carry um, in their minds and their hearts forever. And so the, you really do leave with a family. Um, we hope that you get that connection that um, surpasses years and distance after the program. And with that, We'll move straight into the Q&A portion of the webinar tonight. You can scan this QR code on the screen as well as follow us on all the socials that are sort of linked on the bottom there. For more information to keep up with CHCI, what we do, our programs and events, and that QR code will have flyers, this presentation or other presentations like it um, to share with colleagues of yours, family, friends, um, educators, coaches, mentors, anybody that, again, has access to a young person's life. Or if you yourself as a high school student and you want to get your friend group to apply, please um, scan the, the um, QR code and share across your social, social media slash um, in-person circles and um, families and groups. With that, um, we'll be taking questions. 
to wrap up the presentation here. I'll get started with our first one, but please feel free to use either the Q&A, the chat. You can also hop off the mic, hop on the mic, hop off of it, hop off of mute and get on the mic and um, ask us anything out loud. To start, um, let's ask Henry about how this program has impacted you. You're actually a current freshman in college. So it's been a few years since you have done the program. Um, how do you think that it's helped you and how, or is helping you now in your current studies? Um, I think that it's helped me just um, the overall, just all the skills that we learned from the program, like communication, um, leadership, um, working within a team. Um, I would just say these are all things that have contributed to my college experience so far. Um, whereas in like joining clubs, um, putting my best foot forward to um, help lead in these clubs um, and just make sure that things are running smoothly. I think it's a lot of the skills that we learned in the next gen program um, were, were vital to my development as a leader um, throughout my college experience so far. Um, and I think that any, anyone that's accepted to this program would be lucky. Um, and I, I just really think that Next Gen does their best job to um, develop the next um, the next young leaders of tomorrow. Um, and I think overall, just I'll, I'll just to sum it all up, communication skills, leadership skills, um, working within a team um, are, are all things thank that I've you, been Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, that is, that warms my, my heart again as the, the program manager because I, um, that was the goal. So I am very, very happy to hear that. Roberto, um, Stephanie, either one of you, can you share how it's helping you um, currently where, um, I'm not sure if we emphasized that in the beginning, but what your grade in school is and sort of how it inspired you? I mean, uh, yes. Uh, so in my very specific example, um, I came from Cuba three years ago and I came from a country where civic engagement and involvement with the government was virtually non-existent. So for me, the idea of civic engagement and being involved with the community, being involved with local government, national, state government, was something ecstatic in some way. And CHCI sort of gave me this opportunity to understand what civic engagement and being involved with government meant, not only at a national level, but also at a personal level because of the community that we were able to create. If there's something that I really cherish about CHCI was the opportunity to make learning about government and learning about the issues that impact us as Latino leaders more personal and palpable to our own experiences. And that's something that inspires me to also incentivize and motivate other students that, like me, immigrated to the United States relatively recent to get involved with government, be active in their community, and just overall promote civic engagement at their own scale. Gracias, gracias. Stephanie? Um, well, in difference to um, Roberto, I'm not an immigrant, but I'm part of Puerto Rico. So we do struggle a lot when it comes to the political side of everything. And to be honest, CHCI has given me the, the opportunity to be able to understand the United States government at a deeper level, which allows me to understand my government to even a more deeper level because their governments are, are correlated. So thanks to CHCI, I have a much broader understanding about what's going on where I currently live and what I can do to help my community and help the people around us. Because even though sometimes we don't see it, um, everybody is struggling at this moment and trying to do my best to help everyone around me is something I'm, I really enjoy and I've taken away from the program. Uh. So proud of them, y'all. As you can tell, their answers are not fabricated. I did not tell them to say this. They did not practice. This is just the impact um, of the program. And so thank you, all, um, each of you, for, for answering. I saw two questions come into the chat. One was a technical question um, from, I believe, Daniel. Um, legal status for applicants to apply. Um, we do not ask that. So 
we are happily and encouraged, happily accepting and encourage folks who are DACA, who are undocumented um, to come to the program. You don't have to, in terms of travel, present any um, legal identification other than a student ID. So to get to hop on a train, on a, a plane, that should not be an issue. And we've had a number of students um, who are undocumented and or DACA. There's another question on the chat. Um, I believe it's not showing up on my end, so I'm sorry for uh, can't remember who it was, but it asked where did the, the students stay? Um, we typically stay in a hotel right outside of DC, which if you know anything about the DMV, it's not far. It's just like across the street um, on the other side of a river in Virginia. Um, and so we'll, it, the the hotels always vary depending on availability, uh, but it's not very far again from um, the center of uh, of DC of downtown where all the monuments, um, the White House and the Capitol are. And we stay um, there two to a room, um, females on one floor and males on another. Um, the team um, staff also stays. 24 seven with them. And we partner with an organization called Close Up, who is a civic, a civic, civic education, civic learning, um, a, a nonprofit education, uh, nonprofit like us, who specialize in high school, middle school and high school programs. Um, and so they also provide us with more support um, and some volunteers that actually sit outside of the hallways 24 hours um, at night so that we know that the students are not leaving their room. Bruce asks, how many applications do you y'all usually get and how many do you accept? Great question. Um, we are typically, we're seeing an increase of num in numbers every year, um, roughly um, around 500 plus, more than 500 applications a year. We accept 120 roughly, never more, sometimes less. Um, so anybody who's good at math, divide 500 in 120, you'll get your percentage there. It is a little bit of a hot, of an, of a um, competitive program. We'll put it that way. He also asks, and if you don't think your family qualifies for financial aid, would your application automatically be declined? No. Um, one thing about the Next Gen Latino Leadership Program is the fact that we want to create a diverse um, cohort of students. So we want students that do come from um, a bit of a more privileged background, students who are now second and third generation um, Latinos who, you know, aren't the first in their family um, that aren't still getting acclimated to the systems of the United States and therefore have a little bit more access to money. We want Afro-Latino students who aside from the, econ the like economic financial standpoint are of a different race um, typically than your average or and or like stereotypical Latino, right? We want students again from the island directly like Stephanie in Puerto Rico. We want students um, like Roberto who are recent immigrants um, from any of the Latin American um, countries. We have students who are of mixed um, race status and um, one of their parents is Latinos. All of it, it's important because it's, you're all Latinos and we're all um, wanting that that diversity to learn from each other, um, to create, again, community amongst each other to tackle these issues and, and really get to know ourselves as leaders. Really great questions, y'all. Thank you so much. Any other questions? comments, reactions. While we're waiting, I'm gonna ask each of the students um, one more on my end, one that's on my mind. Anybody can go first, I'll, I'll uh, let y'all decide. Um, but my question is, um, what would you do differently? If you were given this chance to to come back again, what would you do differently? What would you take more advantage of? What do you sort of wish you could see again? Um, well, I'm gonna answer this question if y'all don't mind. But um something I would do um differently is to be like 
much more open at the beginning. Um, I was really shy at the beginning because it was my first time ever, ever traveling alone, living, um, leaving La Isla alone. So it was like a really scary um, situation for me. And at the beginning, I was like super shy. I barely talked to people. And I really regretted that because at the end, I met everyone in Familia 3 and we got so close together and it hurt so much having to leave them, knowing that some of them I might see them again, but most of them I will. And I really wish I was more open, but what can I say? Now I have friends all over the country and even in Ecuador, so it was worth it. But I would, I would change that. Great, great answer, Stephanie. Roberto, Henry, any thoughts that you have? So on my end, and echoing again what, what Stephanie said, I will say that in my personal experience, I will also would have tried to be more involved with the overall group. I feel like at the end, at the end of the program was really the moment where I was able to connect with everyone and really got this sense of familia per se. But through most of the program, I was uh, mainly with my very specific like group of friends that I talked to which were the Puerto Ricans because I could speak Spanish to them <laughs> um but yes just try to be more involved with the overall group because at the end of the day what I share is the most what I share is the most from this program is the community that we're able to create in just one week and it's something that as Stephanie said you're gonna have friends from all over the United States who some might share your own experiences some might not but you all went through together through the most of one of the best programs that you could ever experience in high school. So yes, just get more involved with your familia and try to be um, one with them since the beginning of the program. Um, kind of echoing what Stephanie and Roberto said, I would also say pretty much just getting more involved and just being more outgoing, I would say. Um, I kind of just started off the program a little bit quiet, I would say. I mean, towards the end, um, I definitely made some good friends. But I would say just being more outgoing, um, just pursuing uh, more friendships with these people um, at the very start of the program would have been even more crucial because um, we became really close towards the end of the program. And we even still have a group chat on Instagram. Um, some people still text on there. But, uh, but yeah, I just say, you know, be more involved, outgoing, pretty much that. Awesome. Yep. They really did um, answer the thought that the, the way that I thought that they would, because I wanted to share that it's only seven days, six days, actually, if you really count it that like one day, it's a Sunday to Saturday. Um, and the travel days really don't, you know, you're, you're very drained and um, not really in the mood to, to network and to make friends, but it goes by so fast. And so, um, definitely uh whoever i'm sure somebody in this group will be selected um take advantage of the time that you have meeting these folks um who can end up being somebody that you go to college with um and or visit on a random trip to puerto rico or anywhere fun um now that you you know will have a, a national network Two more questions here on the chat. I think three more, um, and then we'll wrap up. What would the daily schedule look like during the trip? Um, I'll give a brief sort of synopsis of it and day by day. Um, my junior alums, feel free to just chime in and share anything that I might miss too. Um, this also gets revamped every year. Um, we evaluate based on uh, our data, our results of our um, surveys. So what I'm saying might not be exact, um, but it would be something like this. So Sunday is arrival um, with orientation, very short, simple, and sweet. We don't want to um, tire you even more than some that will be traveling six plus hours. Um, Monday would be Latino, Latino identity, um, slash get to know you icebreakers and workshops slash, um, sightseeing. So you'll visit some monuments. Do y'all remember what monuments we visited the first day? The first day? Um, we visited FDR Memorial. We visited, um, Martin Luther King Memorial. 
and we visited another one. Oh, and um, Jefferson Jefferson's Memorial Jefferson. Yeah. Ah, see, I, I knew we'd get it as a team. Um, so that's day one or day two, whichever way you look at it. Tuesday, um, some more um uh, of the civic engagement components. This this debate, um, uh, mock trials, mock um Congress, so that it really prepares for Wednesday's Hill Day. Um. Wednesday's Hill Day is on Capitol Hill. Um, you'll meet your member of Congress and or members in your region if yours is not available. Um, and you'll end with um, the war memorials. Thursday is college um, career exploration. So lots of workshops, speakers, panelists um, that answer questions about what your future might look like. And um, a lot of self-reflection too um, is, is included in those workshops. Um, we'll have a lunch with the sponsors and the staff. They want to meet them and, um, you know, just get to know how their sort of their financial contribution is impacting somebody's lives. So that's always fun and cool. Um, Friday is actually an extension day that is being added. These students left on Friday. They flew out on Friday. Um, so surprise, Stephanie, uh, Henry, Roberto, we added one more day. So this year we'll have more breaks and um, also new curriculum. Um, and then they would fly out on Saturday. Uh, then we have another question here. Karina asks, is it possible to get a copy of the presentation recording? Already answered, but we will answer out loud as well. We'll record, we have this recorded. We will be sending out um, emailing to the folks that RSVP'd on the call and, and on YouTube. Um, and then Silvana, um, what are some CHE alumni that you can mention that are known leaders? Great question. We actually just got an email um, on staff that one of our alumni um, was nominated to be the ambassador of DR, of the Dominican Republic. Um, we have alumni who are um, on Biden's cabinet, not cabinet, but administration. I think cabinet might be a little bit too far fetched, but they're they're going there. They they will be there. <laughs> um, we have alumni who are in leadership positions in the corporate, nonprofit, government um, spaces. Really, any pretty much anything and everything. Um, notable alumni, really though, that we call on will probably be um, the ones that we mentioned. Um, I don't know, Leslie, anybody on a comms end that you deal with more that you see? <laughs> she's she's very new, so maybe she doesn't know. Um, but we can send some some notable alums or also feel free to follow us on on socials um and we share um information about them. It just came to mind. Oh my gosh, yes, we even share with the the, the students. Thank you, Roberto, for hinting at this one. Um, a next gen alum who did this specific program is the youngest elected leader in the Chicago uh, in the Illinois State House of Representatives um, representing the Chicago uh, district. Um, his name is Representative Gonzalez Edgar Gonzalez. Um, he has a little chapter in a book that we give students to read about, and he did this program. Um, another uh, alumni of ours, um, similar to that, is. I don't know if he's the youngest, but he is an elected leader in the um, Arizona House of Representatives. So a lot of really cool people. Anybody, I, I is there any, just out of curiosity that um, you three slash Leslie that you know, I'll give you a chance to say. If not, hey. That's okay. I hope I answered <laughs> that question. Well, um, this isn't like a really known alumni, but it's kind of like a cool story. When I was on my way back from like DC to Puerto Rico, we had to do um, a stop in Florida. And one of our flight attendants actually did the program of CACI and they saw it. And it was like a really nice moment. I remember Cindy Maribel and our group shared a picture of us meeting someone that did like the program. I think it was nine. 1980 something so it was like kind of fun to have both generations like in the same space 
That's awesome. That's probably one of, I remember that question, probably one of our first ever uh, program participants if it was in the 80s. Um, and y'all are the most recent. So very, very cool. All right, we're down to the last five minutes. Be happy to give you those back. Um, if there's no question, no more questions, I'm going to give it one second and start to start my concluding spiel here. I want to thank everybody for joining us um, on this lovely Wednesday night. Again, I'm acknowledging it's a stressful time, um, both in our personal, academic, professional lives, but even in the world and all the things that are happening um, as we talk about policy and politics. Um, and so I really hope that everybody um, uh, takes advantage of this opportunity and other opportunities to make an impact and create change in their communities, um, positive change and, and be leaders. Um, and that's, that's what we hope that we're doing um, with these awesome folks like Stephanie, Roberto and Henry, um, who are on the call. I wanna thank them and publicly appreciate them for their time um, and their very, very beautifully thought out answers. Um, and we'll stay on a little bit after if you have any one-on-one -on -one questions that you wanna talk about any comments and or um, reactions, again, or questions, but truly gracias um, y buenas noches. <laughs>